send you directly over to another conversation with Jennifer and myself. We continue the conversation we've been having, but we expand upon it, particularly during these times of our eclipse season, what's happening now with soul fragments integrating. We're just expanding upon what we've already talked about. I think it will be very helpful to assist you in understanding what may be going on in your journey that is also can be very subtle and we can miss it. But I give an example of what's been going on with me recently this week, pretty powerful things that I think will be helpful to you to really tune in to potentially what you're experiencing or will be experiencing and a process for that. So we expand upon that, we talk about that. And um, again, it's Jennifer and myself sharing just a conversation that we have when we get together. So thank you so much for joining me today. I'm Carolyn, I'm a channel, I'm a distance energy healer, and I'm a spiritual awakening mentor. And I offer these videos and these channel messages from the light keepers to assist you on your awakening ascension and your life journey. So if you wanna work with me or even check out my services, check out the link below or go to purplerainhealing.com and check out all of my services. I would love to work with you in assisting you forward in your awakening, ascension, and your life journey. So we're going to head on over to Jennifer now, and I will wrap up with you briefly at the end. It's been such an interesting time these last week or so. You know, we got the eclipse coming on. Well, we're in the eclipse energy now, but it's just... Uh, Interesting how you can start to notice how the events, like the cosmic events, when you start becoming more aware of them, you can start to see how you navigate them individually or personally. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. And it's, 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 I always thought about this. It's, it's nice to see, okay, there's a eclipse coming up and what that could mean for you, but I think you're right. I have and I, I I don't know if it's my personal experience a lot of things that are said like eclipse energies feel like this and, or feel like one thing and then the group kind of experiences it and I hear people say yeah I felt the same way I'm usually exactly the opposite of what they're feeling that's so, what happens to me a lot of times uh, so I think that it is it's a very personal thing it and it has to do with your personal energetic your yeah. signature, kind of your background. You know, you think about, we, you know, we do genealogy and things. We think about our background, our genetics, our genome, our heritage, you know, are we Irish? Are we German? Are we, you know, whatever. But you look at the, on a cosmic level, you, you, there are elements on a cosmic level that are very unique too. So cosmically speaking, galactically speaking, you can have a very unique set of, um, background energy right yeah. so you can imagine we're not all cookie cutter you yeah. know we're all we're different even on even you know beyond from beyond earth plane right so when things like that happen you know different cosmological events alignments our genetics or our cosmic genetics yeah. may act entirely different than somebody well, else and it's interesting too because you know it, it also depends on for example, what we talked about last week, or I guess it was last week, we're talking about how when you're doing healing, you know, healing work or energy is clearing out of you and the, the divine energy wants to come in. Well, we're all different stages of that, right? I mean, basically, the easiest way to say it is there's going to be incoming energy. You're going to react to it differently based on your circumstances and kind of right. where you're at in your journey. So that's depending on what we have to work on and how much of, of the work we've done, and then that's also a 3D thing too. It's not just at energy body. It's what kinds of things are you doing in your own journey that serve you, that making decisions that um, um, you know better align with who you divinely are versus just living the human journey and thinking you have to do this. Like, you know, that whole thing, the shift and change in how we live our lives too is different and unique to each person. So the energies are going to impact that 3D life as well as the energetic body. Through your life at all, it'll impact your multidimensional being. Yes. So, and then you're you're in the balance of all of the dimensions and how that impacts the timing of it. You know wh how it comes in. It comes it can come into less dense. I think a little bit a little earlier, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, and then it changes yours for the you know the event. So there's a lot of dynamics going on individually. We 
yeah. Um, I think it's comforting to have a joint. Um, it's validating to have a joint experience with others who say, yes, I'm feeling the same way. It helps you understand, makes you feel like you're not um, like an outcast of some kind, but you know, you feel camaraderie about events, but you also need to remember that you're very unique, very unique. Yeah. Um, you know, well, we didn't, can... it's not cookie cutter. It's, you know, we, um, no. we we're very well, unique can... on our own, you know? The, it, exactly. The incoming energy will affect us all uniquely. In fact, I, I want to give an example of what happened to me the other day. Sure. I was actually going to do an individual video on this, but I think I'm just going to plug it in here. <laughs> sure. Uh, so but this talk, this speaks to what we're talking about it, the other day. And this is so interesting. You know, we all do our, our healing work in different ways, but what I've always said to people is connecting in with your, how you feel like your emotions and your feelings and not just doing what we typically do in our average human life where we feel a thing and we kind of just move on and we don't, focus on why we have that intense feeling. And then we just kind of ignore it. We move on, keep doing our human journey. Those yes. things come back. We just keep turning a blind eye for whatever reason, because we don't want to deal with it or we're busy. Well, anyway, needless to say, when we really connect into what we are feeling and spend some time with it, oh my gosh, talk about powerful. This is what happened to me the other day. I have a tendency to be one of those people who, um, how do I want to say this? Like kind of, I move quickly. I do, th I do, I'm always busy. I got something going on. And for me to go, okay, no, wait. Okay, no, wait. Sit with this is, is a little more difficult maybe than some people. So the other day I did the right thing. I'm going to tell you, I will do this again. And it's really connecting into how we feel. And a big part of this awakening essential journey is connecting into our true selves and how we feel in our emotions and then being able to understand that and 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 be able to dissect it so i this is crazy i ordered socks the other day okay for christmas um for myself actually but that's another story anyway so i ordered these socks and they were supposed to be here it was on uh what is today sisters it's supposed to be there on um monday uh, because I got a notification that said the United States Postal Service has delivered your package at 1.35 p.m. today. And I'm like, cool. But I was sitting here and I'm like, that's interesting. I didn't see the Postal Service drive by. So go out. I got nothing. Right. I got nothing. I'm like, that's weird. So I called them. Long story short, they said, go see your neighbors. I went check my neighbors. I'm like, no, the neighbors didn't have it. And I'm like, it said it was delivered to my address. So. I then am like, okay, I'll write the company. So this is getting kind of interesting already, right? Like I'm kind of really like intent on figuring this out right away. So I write the company and they write me back and say, well, the U.S. Postal Service, you know, that typical standard thing, they've delivered it. You need to check with them. And suddenly I all of a sudden, I could tell I was being really intense about this, but all of a sudden I got kind, it wasn't really low level. It was pretty intense. Yep feeling of, and I made a list of, of just the, the feelings I had checked this out, felt insecure. Yeah. I felt out of control. I felt like I had no choice. I had no voice. Um, I felt that I was, and this is the biggie at the mercy of yeah. and all of a sudden, how'd this go down? So it was that same, and it was the next day. Cause I went to bed with this feeling of like, I have no control. What? And this is just socks being sent. sent to. Oh, and so I kept trying to tell myself, these are just socks. This doesn't matter. Like, this is not a big deal, but it, it wouldn't leave me. So anyway, I go to bed with this icky feeling, just icky feeling. And I woke up the next day with the icky feeling thinking, well, maybe they'll be delivered today. But I thought, hold on a minute. This is when it got powerful was I stopped myself and I said, I got to figure out where that this feeling is coming from because it, it was kind of irrational right because it sucks that you know I I could you know probably get my money back or whatever it wasn't life or death well guess what I in my kitchen and I'm thinking about this and I all of a sudden let my I let myself spend the time which is key to go okay wait that's there what are these feelings I made my list what are these feelings and why do I have these feelings it didn't relate at all to my current lifetime and if you know, or my story, most of my stuff is past life stuff, right? It, but it can be, re it's reflected then in this journey, oftentimes for me to trigger it, to be able to spend time with it. All of a sudden I'm in my kitchen and I start sobbing, 
sobbing over not so much the socks, but what they represented. And then I had a mantra. I'm, I'm like bent over my counter, sobbing intensely. I'm not a crier, but when I do, I cry intensely. And what I got when I was doing this montage of past lives in the feeling all these lives, they came in a group, okay? I couldn't identify specifically them, but the theme of them was all these lives that you through your entire lifetime had were at the, and this, the big one was at the mercy of others all the time, yeah. all the time. Your life was just, you were just pulled along in the journey, whether it was slavery, servitude, you know, you can name 10,000 things, right? I, I born into slavery, kept coming up, born into slavery, no choices, all of that. I'm sobbing. And this montage shows up and because I let myself go, wait a minute, I didn't just let it happen and feel the feeling and try to run away from it. I spent time going, where's that coming from? Why do I feel like this? It doesn't have any relevance to my current life. These socks aren't the problem. There's something right. going on. They are the vehicle for me to identify what's going on. Now, we don't have to identify it, but what I had to do, I got lucky because, of course, what do I do? I get information. I get past lives. I get information. So it's, I'm like, oh, my God, it's past life. But the bigger part of this was. I let the emotion come out. I let yes. the tears come out. The They've always said um, tears are a way for memory. How, how do they say that? Um, they're crystalline, so they carry memory with us. They're a way to be able to clear, all right? And I'm sobbing. And I all of a sudden realized, oh my gosh, it's more the action. It's not the having to figure it out. And I've told people this before. You don't have to figure out your past lives, but you need to feel into your emotion. You need to feel into what you're feeling. Not rather suppress, than- not suppress what's coming through you at yeah, all. So check this out. So check this. So I go through this like three times that day. I all of a sudden find myself sobbing. One was in the bathtub. One was in the kitchen over the yeah. same thing. And I'm like, I know what this is. I need to let this go. But you don't need to know what it is. Just let it go. Feel the feels, feel the feels, let it go because you're clearing whatever that is that is coming through in the manner of some crazy little thing like not getting my socks. So my friend says to me, as I tell her what's going on, she says, oh, she says the U.S. Postal Service does stuff like that. They'll say it's delivered and it's not. She goes, I think you're probably going to get in the next couple of days. That's just what I've experienced. And so I got from my team, oh no, you're going to get your socks. And I'm like, I'm like, guess what? Two days later, I get my socks. And I'm like, I needed the two whole days because it didn't just happen the first day. The second day is when I had the crying fit. And now the bigger part of this is, and I know I'm going on and on, but this is important, is. No, I'm getting hit with so many, so many things. About oh, good, because I want to hear so about it. Good. They yeah. have synchronized the yeah. God. So what happened then is, so I went through this. What I realized the uh-huh. next day, this has been this whole week. I had been holding on to that low level thing, feelings for quite some time since July and all of my horrible issues I've had with energetics of being fearful of all this stuff, right? This, those energetic things I've been having, having going on, but they were part of this, right? So what I did is I released this piece all of a sudden, because I'm almost back to hundred percent, but I wasn't fully all of a sudden the next day I'm like for the, and this has happened the last two days, I have felt oh my God, I'm nearly fully back to myself, but it was partially this that needed yes. to come up yes. through this odd little sock thing, but it's also very much tied to the last three months of my journey. So I know that sounds convoluted and wild, but the last two days I'm like, oh my God, this is why we need to bottom line. The moral of the story is when yeah. you feel a feeling, let yourself go and feel it or it yes. get some time to spend with it. You, maybe you can't do the crying thing because you're at work now, but you need to go back home and go, let's feel it. Yes. Even if you don't want to examine exactly why. And why? let me, let me just tell you what came, came to my, it kind of explained itself while you were talking. I thought, okay. You know how sometimes we talk about resonating when you're with another person, you're kind of like a tuning fork and you tune them while you're talking and you get some activation, right? Okay. So when you were telling me about this trigger of the socks not being here and having kind of like, I was lied to, it's supposed to be here, kind of these series of emotions, your emotions have frequency Mm -hmm. and that frequency leaves you in your field, right? Let's say, for instance, Carolyn, you've got 
you said, I, I don't feel like I'm really in tune with myself. I'm in touch with like my whole being is not really feel felt right now. And I have that all the time with myself too. I think that the tone will make the bridge to the soul fragment or part of you that had that experience and has not been able to let it go. And because you felt this fear, betrayal, out of control, lack of service, you know, some kind of suppression, you sent the frequency that is the same as the one that they've experienced dominantly in their life. Yes. So you have just made a bridge from Carolyn to their life through a frequency, may not be a nice one, right. but if through a frequency now where you can almost find each other. That makes so sense. And so now you feel it and you cry. Now it's almost like seeing a friend or a daughter yes. or a sister who's had a traumatic experience and saying, oh my God, I hear you. I feel you. They connect I because you know, you, you connect. Um, well, I think you just said this. You connect in, you're connecting into that emotion. They're connecting into that emotion, you're connecting that into their frequency, into that frequency of that soul fragment. You're reintegrating. You're reintegrating. Yes. Oh my God. This is this is the reintegration process. That's it. I I kind of knew that. I hadn't articulated that though, because we know we do it, right? But I've never yes. seen the process actually be able to follow it. Do you know what I mean? They also yes. said just now to me, as you're talking, this is interesting. They said this is tied to abundance. And it's yeah. tied to lack. Like, okay, so those are two things for me, right? Is abundance and lack. I have a financial construct I'm working through, right? But it's sure. that's abundance. I'm, it's tied to abundance. It's tied yeah. to lack. It, yeah. I also got the words, and this is an overarching theme of the lives I was just telling you about. My life was not my own. Yes. So, yeah. so if you think about times when you could have had lives that at none, they, nothing about it was your own, right? You were just dragged along. But this is all wrapped up into, and it's interesting because as you're talking, what I've realized is I've been having some thoughts about the whole financial construct thing and my journey and all of that. And all of a sudden, the last couple of days, I'm kind of not thinking about that anymore. I mean, this is a process. It's not going to happen just overnight. Some things may come back for me to revisit, but it's tied to this. I it's right. That's the frequency cool. connecting into the soul fragment. That's it. That's right. So say a soul fragment had really traumatic life right yeah you suppress that feeling which is going to be part of gonna be like your subconscious or your it's going to be an over underlying tone because it's part of your being but if it's one that you suppress you don't want to look at it. i don't like to feel that way i don't want to do that sometimes i feel homicidal <laughs> and i don't want to look at that right now nope, nope what if you let the feeling come through you don't have to act on it obviously but if you yeah. let the feeling come through you there's something there. What wouldn't that be amazing to be able to integrate that and let that release from your entire energetic yeah. and have that soul fragment come back in. You'll feel like you're fuller being without having an underlying um, feeling. And I think that's why I was, you know, it's, it's not always easy to do that. You know, sometimes you have to be by yourself or you have to have a very close partner to allow you to do that. But I, I, I find that that, that is very important. You have to express yeah. your feelings. Yeah. Well, and I think too, and this is coming in too, this is kind of telling the whole story of how this can work out is as we know, we can manifest things physically because of energies we haven't worked through, energies we still are holding inside of us, soul fragments that want to connect with us, but we're not, we're not connected, kind of the whole thing, right? Well, I think I've mentioned to you, I, I know I've done this on the videos, is heart palpitations and throat chakra stuff I've had, yes. like thyroid, yes. right? Yeah. that's being, why um, this is it or speak or not being heard or validated or not being yeah. allowed to my talk. life's not my own my life's not my own so when we when we have these things happen to us think about this this was super simple this is an underlying emotion that i wasn't recognizing or i was yeah. holding on to a vibration it was mm -hmm. triggered by something super simple socks so don't discount anything that can be your way as a trigger you know because what i could have done is gone well that's stupid the sock thing but and then just not even looked at it. And then socks would have come in two days. I would have missed the learning. Right? It's funny because my husband hates to hear me say this because he's taking a kind of typical man in, in some ways of sensitivity <laughs> in his feelings. He, um, But like I'll say something, especially with my daughter, who will, she's very sensitive. She's athletic. She's strong and everything else. But she's sensitive in some things. And sometimes she will cry 
over things that you would normally think are cry worthy, right? So I, whenever she does this, I'm, I listen to her, but I always know there's something else going on here, but I'm going to hear her out, right? Yep. It bothers yep. my husband. What are you crying for? That's nothing to cry about, you know? And I was so you need to chill out and allow her to have her feelings and say what she's going to say and realize maybe crying, it's not about what she's talking about. Maybe she yeah. doesn't know how to tell you what it's about. Well, he's like, oh, okay, well, whatever, you know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but it is, it's so true. I think that it would be the same thing that you, you know, treat yourself like you would treat your child. Right. If you were to have a, a, a burst of emotion, you wouldn't tell your child stop having that emotion. You would hug them and let them cry it out. Right. Yeah. And I think too, yes, it, I, absolutely. And I think too, those of us now that understand this metaphysically and what's really going on, being able to encourage others, family members, children to be able to express their emotions. We know why it's important because otherwise it all gets locked up inside. And this is happening now. So collectively, right? Like people are sensitive. We're needing to get that emotion out. We're needing to talk about it. We're needing to cry. So it's, yeah. it's, it's, something to actually encourage in that sense it's like you said we're not going to necessarily understand it like i did i had the montage of past lives show up but we know know, thank god seriously because you know i can think of some things that i i specifically know why it's happening i'm like oh my god there's some very very traumatic things that may have happened to us on different levels galactic even you know there was a whole trafficking thing with our you know, humans and the galactics at one time. Yeah. Um, it was not nice. What was happening was not nice. And it would not be fun to fully remember oh. it. It could release the trauma of it. Right. So let's say you have this, I'm far from home. I don't feel like I'm home. I feel like I'm far from home. I don't know anybody. And I feel like I have no control. I don't know where I am. You know, some feelings like that would come up and you'd say, where the hell is this coming from? Don't, don't, don't think it too hard. Just feel it. Exactly. Right? That's exactly it. Feel it to the point where that soul fragment can come in and clear it and not right. have that trauma going well, on. Well, then is it any wonder that we come in as a, a single consciousness in essence um, and not remember our past lives like we're living them again? I mean, we would be, we would be overwhelming. Be yeah. It would be. Exactly. Yeah. So you have an emotional body, you have a, a instrument that allows you to do that um, at a level, your real only uh, difficulty or work would be allowing it to come through you and yep. not have, you know, I don't necessarily have to remember all of it, but just know it needs to come through it, let, let it, let it out, express it. Yeah. And I so think the easy thing for you to remember is you just said the word express it out we don't need to know anything more than i'm feeling something and i need to be able to express it yes i'm feeling something i I need to be able to think about this too some sometimes i've had and you know they call it fibromyalgia it's a lot of these different things unexplainable pain that they have no no answer for they just they gave it a name right yep i think uh, you know and in the last few years i've had a lot of this just pain in my body this random weird could feel like an injury but i didn't injure myself in this life right Mm -hmm. but i think about a lot of the super traumatic stuff especially for a large collective group or something coming through a body is going to feel like i got hit by a train and all i did is go sleep and wake up what happened right yeah so i i think there's a lot of that too it's it's this large large group huge soul clearings right Yes, like you said last time in the last video, you were talking about that, right? Like these mm-hmm. huge collective oversoul energies that are coming in. But also, yeah. to your point, we're clearing those too. Yeah. I mean, and I'm thinking, I clear this as fast as I can. It's like, oh my God, yeah, I feel you all right. I'm like, I'm trying to ice my body or, you know, get massage or whatever and say, whoo, that hurts. So I'm, I'm validating, yeah, that hurts. I don't know how much you try not to be in resistance to pain is kind of hard, but I'm still feeling it and having the frequency of it enough that I could make the connection to the, the fractal, the fractal or the, the whatever facet enough to make the bridge so they could reintegrate and drop, yep. drop the trauma, drop the pain, drop the body that hurts. Right. Yes. So, um, I think that's important. You said there was three other things you were talking about now. Oh my God. It was, you said something. Oh, three, uh, it was three days. Okay. So there well, is a, yeah. 
construct of um, time. And it's kind of like a cube, but there's about four platforms of time throughout it. And in these different, you could have one uh, facet or fractal or uh, filament in this, and it would have be having the same life, but having it in different times to, um, structures. So, so for you as a, if you're you want to incarnate it as what you kind of a larger being, mm-hmm. uh, your larger group, you could have three days of something, but it could represent three years to somebody else who's a facet of yours, 300 mm-hmm. years, 3000 years, 3 million years. Okay. Based on which time one, the which one they're running, they were running in. So you, they're like echoes into longer time. Okay. Ooh, so okay. You can be clearing massive amounts of uh, experiences through very long pe- pe- um, periods of time. Yep. So when you, you know, like I don't know if you've had this experience too, but I felt like I went to sleep and I woke up and I feel like it's two million years later. Yeah, right. I know. Yeah, I'm like, it's only been a year, but man, I feels like it's been millions of years going on here in the background. And I thought that's why, because you're, you're, you are able to, as the way, you know, your being is amazing. You're able to do that in the way that you have embodied. So it can feel like that so much history has just all of a sudden come in and it's part of your energetic and you're like, yeah. Man, they yeah, just said they just said that's part. I don't understand this, but they said that's part of our expansive capability. Yes, yeah, I think that's right. I think that's right. And they keep showing, like, like we can flex. We're we can we're flex flexible. That is, is that. See, now I always want to try to turn something into something literal that we can grasp onto and understand. And I'm not sure I can do that here, but. Yeah. I think too, to your point, what I'm, what I'm connecting with is sometimes the energy, sometimes you'll get an individual energy or life or whatever coming through you to clear. And it's just fairly gentle, but yes. then it can, the, the individual lives or situations or whatever energies coming through can also be individual, but overwhelm you. But they're yes. talking about co- like the collective stuff too, is the same way. Like all of a sudden then a big bolt of collective will come through. Yes. Right. It, oh, they just showed, you know, they just showed a metaphor of, oh my God, they're so funny. You know how snakes, when they eat something and you see the bulge. <laughs> yeah. They're showing, they're showing the snake. It makes sense. So it, may not, it may not come in in perfect bite-sized pieces that might come in slowly. And then you get this huge one going, oh crap, you know, that's huge. So uh, I think that, you know, that we talked about this when we were in, in sessions, you know, our mentoring sessions, you, we talked about this, how I was struggling with a lot of body pain and a lot of things happening. It felt like a lot of just uh, going on yeah. in there. And they were saying there it was tied to the Orion War. Yeah, right. I thought, okay, so consider a huge bite size. Not it wasn't bite size. It was huge, right? A big piece came in from a huge group that was participated in the Orion War. Yeah. So you can imagine how that would feel as a energy to try to now yes. reinvent, right? There was a lot of confusion with that too. What was going on? How, who was responsible for what? Why it even happened? Um, there was a lot of pain. There was some right. really awful things that happened to people. Servitude was involved in that as well. Um, but this, so that was would be like a giant bomb to drop on someone. <laughs> you know, that, that would be more than a bite yes. size, right? You know, yes. so, so um, I want to ask you something because I'm getting happening I'm getting something. So I want to see if we can figure this out. Sure. They just said to me, per what you said, can only fit so much into a body, right? So your body. But then they yeah. just earlier said, and they're giving me a visual of, I don't know how this, if this even makes sense to talk about, only so fit so much into a body. Cause we know how this is, we're a container, but, and we can feel it when it's like, there's too much in me. Like there's too much, but they said, but there's a way to expand yourself. And I'm like, I, that they kind of just basically just said that as you're talking, like, like to be able to, they keep saying the word expand yourself. I don't know if we want to go there. Do you're getting anything on that? 
Like, well, I think it's important to do that because I have felt the same thing. You know what I think sometimes what's coming in part of the claustrophobic feeling that we talked about last time, part of the, I feel like I'm, why am I, why do I feel like I'm being bound or captive or, and you know, it's just doesn't feel like get this off of me. You know, I'm free. I don't have this on me. Part of that is the trauma that's coming in at the same time where your body needs to be, your being energetic needs to be expanding to able to get it at the same time that what's coming in, it was the contraction. So with your yes. two at the same time, I'm expanding so I can reintegrate all of that horrible crap that happened in the contraction of it. Okay. So that's like this, what we were talking about last time, the in and out kind of same idea. Yes. Yes. That's right. So it's, it's a balancing act. It's just like, it's one of those things I was saying is it takes a, a level of mastery to do this. Um, and it, you know, I, I'm not saying that I did it perfectly either. I struggled for a long time, but I, it made me, I began to realize what was going on. Yes. So, and I still, I still, you know, it's not, it's still challenging for me. It's not small. Oh, yeah. um, I think, I think as you, as you start to experience these things, oh, they just said taking matters into your own hands. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we we start searching for answers they just said and and as we start realizing what what helps us move the energy through our body or helps us to not go into fear or helps us to breathe differently oh that's all part of the process of being able to manage this but there's purpose in this they're talking about yeah. okay hold on this is tying to oh i have chills um this is tying to being able to control and build out and be a participant in uh, growing the light body um okay yes, yes. the um you said i never say this word right merkaba merkaba whatever mm -hmm. however you say that there's something connected there is this making any sense to you this has to yes. do with learning to participate and be and like be our okay they just said be command and control okay yes, so yes. Mm -hmm. i was just going to say that you need to be oh. on point with your energetic yeah. so you're saying i'm always you know your uh your merkaba will change based on what you need, right? So yes. right now I need, this thing that's coming in, it's a, it's a to reintegration, the trauma was contraction into being very small and being under, being controlled. So I am reintegrating that, but what I'm gonna do is then maybe breaking all that crap off of the soul fragment, reintegrating the soul fragment, transmuting that, and, and expanding at the same time. So I need my Merkaba that does that to be active. And yes. you command it. Yes. Activate oh, the that's command and control. That's why they said that. Okay. Okay. Right. So, you you know, because a lot of times I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm contracting. Holy crap! What do I do? You're. It, I think it's just stating this is what I need from my instrument right now. Activate it. Right. So you're just you're understanding. I'm not small. I'm not contracted but I'm feeling it and it's coming now and I need what the one that handles this to be active now. Yeah. So it's not succumbing to the feeling yourself. It's remembering what you're doing as it's coming in. You're feeling it, but you're remembering this is not my feeling, right? It's not... Right. You're not disowning it, but you're you're saying the reason I'm feeling it is not because I'm having the original experience of it. It's because my soul fragment is coming back for reintegration. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. oh, and it, I, it's I, all I, that processing and, and being able to be in command and control and start to participate rather than seeing yourself as a victim. That's when we, oh, they just hard. said the word, they just said the word brilliance. That's, oh, oh brilliance in our light body brilliance building out that that when we participate and we're no longer a victim to the things that just happened to us in this journey uh -huh. command and control this is part yeah. of this becoming bigger in that sense and some of the energies that come back i have to say i have have come back in the sense where they're not necessarily thinking they're coming in to reintegrate they're not like thank god you're here let me come they're still holding on to Okay, because think about this. The ones that were contracted, controlled, put into slavery, there was a slave master, mm -hmm. right? right? And that slave master has to be reintegrated too. So that slave master may come back into the energetic um, environment 
with the ones coming to integrate. And so you're dealing, you might be dealing with more than one, right? You see what I'm saying? You're dealing with both components of that issue, especially if you're doing a large oversell, you're getting both the slave master and the slaves, because right? Because the slave master impacted you and brought energy into you for, is that well, what you're There was a role of a slave master. Right. Oh, there, there oh be, got it. Right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, there would yeah. be both happening. Right. So oh. they don't always come back with an attitude of, yeah, let's reintegrate. That's cool. They come back with an attitude of, they still think they are that. Yeah. Right? So you might have a little, a little bit of a push and pull with the reintegration because they're realizing okay, I'm not in control. They're realizing, you might even be feeling I'm not in control, but it's their feeling going, oh crap, this being is bigger than me. And I thought I was the end all be all king dingling. And I'm realizing, no, I'm just a fractal of a massive being that's trying to reintegrate me. And they're feeling like, okay, I'm not in control. I'm not who I thought I was. I don't have as much power as I thought I did. They, you know, you see what I'm saying? They actually might be feeling that. And that's okay with me. But I'm gonna feel I'm gonna probably get a wave of that too, right? Yes. So so you might get a very complex set of dynamic emotions from all parties involved in an entire situation, including the bad guy and the good guy, yeah. and use the victim and the perpetrator. You might get them all as one. Yes. Coming to they you. all contributed to who we right what you're yeah. feeling and what you you brought into your journey in that right. time. Yeah. And I think mm -hmm. the biggest thing is too, is, you know, this, the, the way we talk about it can sound kind of complex and, but what, what, what I really want people to understand is I, this is what I keep getting. And also what I'm experiencing currently is that you just got to feel the emotion. You got to let, you got to let the, spend some time with the emotion. We, you don't have to unpack all the stuff we're talking about. This is helping them understand. What we're talking about today is helping them understand the process and kind of what does happen. They don't have to go figure it out specifically for themselves. They need to let the emotion go. Does that make sense? Yes. I mean, I, I, I've had this happen to me a few times where I'm just, I'm, I'm done. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm integrating so much stuff. I'm just like, I have no tolerance for any crap, you know? So I have had that feeling of this thing come, you know, this kind of yuck feeling come over me where I'm like, feel, okay, that I don't normally feel this way about oh. anybody, right? And I'm like, oh. Or, and then I'll, I might even hear them speak to me or say something kind of like trying to scare me or intimidate me. And um, I will say, yeah, I hear you, you know, whatever. I hear you. I know you're there. It's like, you know what I mean? It's so it's almost like you're still validating that they're there. Yeah, I can hear you and I can feel you. Mm -hmm. I'm not afraid of you. That's the key too. Yeah, the, yeah. And it gets, and integrates, you know, integrates easier, I think, too. So yeah, very um, much so. Very much so. Because when we go into fear, which got you pretty easy to do when you're not used to this as a human, but when we go into fear, what I found over these three months is it it just makes things so much more difficult. And yes. it accentuates the uncomfortable energy. And it's not meaning that what, what I'll just say is when I started to bring love and light into it, changed mm -hmm. everything, changed yeah. everything. But sure. I brought fear energy into it for a very long time and mm -hmm. was doing all these fight responses then of like what I would do to keep this from happening. <laughs> and yeah. it just, it made it worse. I mean, in that well, sense, you know, because, there is. I think that there's like, okay, for somebody who is, brave for instance or somebody i say you know my mom she's the toughest one i woman i know or um in the face of fear when others are fearful you could be resilient and that is the balancing energy for fear maybe right yeah. um, sometimes when it's fear and you throw love and light at it it's such a divergence of frequency that it's a more of an agitation than it is a relief Yes. But there is a, several layers of um, balancing energies. So it doesn't mean you have to be angelic, love and light and perfect and say everything right and sound like a guru and be the, you know, the um, ideal. You can just be um, stable. You can be resilient in the face of feeling energies that would make somebody fearful right like yeah. being abducted or being assaulted or some of these energy and it would make you feel fearful or you can just say 
I feel it. I know what it is. And I, I'm, I can stay, I can stay stable because I'm, I'm fine. Right. I can balance that. Yep. No mm-hmm. problem. Mm-hmm. And not necessarily feel like I'm failing if I don't want to go into full blown, um, divine, divine light. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Say, I can do this. I can balance you. I, I feel you. Don't worry. It would be like being in a, you know, I'm taking on the role of a group that's having an extremely fearful experience, but you know, you can handle it. And so you're helping by holding your state as being resilient. You know, right? yeah, they're, they're giving yeah. me something. They're, they're giving me something similar. I mean, pairs up with what, exactly what you're talking about, but in the human journey, you know, yes. how you've heard of stories and I'm thinking of the one individual now, I can't think of his name. I want to say it's Wilhelm something, but anyway, how people, there are stories of people who have suffered I mean, there's a lot of suffering. There's a lot of suffering out there, but the stories of the suffering immensely, but they were able to maintain this yeah. mindset to be mm-hmm. able to live in a way that didn't destroy them. There's something similar about that. It has to. Do you know what I'm saying? To, to what you're talking about, it's similar to that. It's like yes. bringing in that vibration, not even realize they're doing it. But does that make sense to you? It does. Yeah. It's a stabilizing. It's a stabilizing because. I don't know how to explain this. You think about huge energies that might've gone into some kind of a, I don't know, something that maybe, I don't, I'm not even sure if it's the right word, but something like we would think of as like an archon or a, a big energy that's had a lot of very dark experiences. Mm-hmm. You can't just blast them with love. You know, you can't just blast them with light. You have to, it wouldn't, it wouldn't work for integration. You'd have to allow it to come in in a, medium mm-hmm. that they could do it right mm-hmm. um but always remembering you're reintegrating them you're the one in control of this you're the one reintegrating that energy mm-hmm. so even if they have some you know bravado of something dark or sinister or whatever that's irrelevant at this point we're reintegrating right yeah so it, it but it, you're you can balance you can allow it to balance that would be your you know that that would be kind of your the ability to do that is a big deal right I, i'm i'm trying i'm at a loss for words on what i'm trying to say here no i get what you're saying and i can't put it in words either i know but it's, you're doing you're, you're explaining it it's a steadiness um it's also a willingness to embrace and encompass the totality of your ability, um, remembering what you're capable of doing. I, I am able to hold a massive spectrum of frequencies, right? I balance these very easily. I don't run over here into only the ones that are super feel good and I shun all the ones that are terrible. I allow them to be together because it, it provides a more rich environment. Yeah. Four. And you know what they're saying? I'm going to, I'm going to interject. Mm-hmm. Finding the stabilizing frequency yeah. that you can do, you can integrate all, it, they, they're showing the stabilizing, you find your stabilizing frequency and then it can, either way it can, come. can show up. Yes. And integrate. Does that? Yes. Wow. Because I've had experiences too, where a very, very high kind of, and a very, very dark have to balance each other the kind of the yin yang okay they have to come into integration at the same time because their energies are uh, matching right they're they're so you've got to be able to do both you've got to be the one that can do both right yeah and the frankly those two coming back in um not necessarily loving their experience but the energetic value of those two having that and coming back in is the S would provide such depth to the soul. Okay. Yeah. So it's valuable. Yeah. These are the ones that are like, yeah, you know, big, big, valuable. Um, you know what? And they're also saying as a part of what we're talking about here, it's holding the love frequency. That's a stabilizing frequency. A love, holding the love frequency, holding the, that's what they keep talking about. Hmm. Yes. And a lot of some people that are in the love free or are, they don't want to be anything except the feel good love. Oh, no. That's love 
it's one of the first distortions mm -hmm. from the original unified frequency or the unified energy where all everything exists. Mm -hmm. The first two is love and light. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's very close to that, but some only want to stay in the feel good light. Love is actually a massively expanded frequency of uh, spectrum. Okay. It's huge. We, um, it I feels it, good. I just heard it incorporates the all. Yes. So what humans have done, okay, I'm yeah. just going to add this. I bet almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What humans have done is, to your point, oh, the feel good, only the good, the love, but everything's love. I, I don't know if that's going to make any sense, but it's, yes. it's expanding our view of love. I just heard. Yes. Love. It's, it's a, it's a, incorporate uh, all. it's, and you know, what feels good about love. We, you know, even if you take our stereotype of what love is, but what feels good of the energy of love, meaning that it is so expansive, is the expansiveness at balance yes. feels amazing. And that would be more akin to the true origin of what the meaning of the word love means. Yes, exactly. And, and what they're showing as you're talking is the expansiveness is then able to draw a big old circle. It keeps expanding, incorporate all, all energies, like all let's, we'll just call them dark or negative energies. And yet it doesn't affect the love uh, 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 bubble you've, that's been created or the expansiveness of that. It's actually so big. It's able to incorporate it all in all fashion, in all ways that it comes in all kinds of energies and still maintain that love vibration. Oh, I don't know if that's going to make any sense at all. It does actually make, it makes, it makes total sense to me. It's a, it's a security. It's like coming home. Yes. Um, it's because, you know, no matter what I'm bringing back in the frequency of my home, love frequency, all of it will be in balance no matter what it is, because I have the balance you know the security of being home right what it feels like to go home um yes. you feel perfectly at ease with who you are right it's one of the um because you have it has everything you need to balance your to rebalance you perfectly right oh so, yeah and you know they're given a metaphor <laughs> and they're showing the home and a woman in an apron, older woman in an apron, kind of like a grandmother's type, old style grandmother type, opening the door for anyone to come in. Like they're showing baked goods and all these things. Like the door's open for anyone. Doesn't matter who you are. And she just lets everybody in. And it's like, oh, and I'm getting the fresh aroma of apple pies and things like, like, it doesn't matter who you are. You're, oh God, I just got chills. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. No, that's right. You're not an out, you know, you're not an outcast in any way at home, right? <laughs> Right. So that's that's kind of that energy of that love energy is like it's like homecoming energy. Wow. Kind of neat, yeah. So it, you know, this is a really interesting conversation because the last like few weeks have been focused really on these kinds of topics and we just keep expanding on them, which is cool. But it, in this time of the you know the the eclipse season, yes, we've got our our eclipse on Saturday that you know, starts, I mean, not, we're in the energy already, but it's just interesting. This is, we're having this conversation because I keep getting this, you know, this is all, it's all designed to help us. All these cosmic events are designed to help us do exactly what we're talking about. Like yes. lift us up, help us do the work that we're doing to make it a smoother journey mm -hmm. and, and to make it happen too. Right. Yes. Yes. Um, and you know, it, it's not always straightforward. I don't think either. No. It's uh, we don't always, even if we, there is any real pre-planning to it, which I feel like we do with that a little bit on our human level. Um, we don't always know how deep it went, how far it was, right? right? When we're bringing it back, we don't know. It it might surprise, right? So I think that that is one of those things you're you're instead of, um, you know, for me, I believe that was part of the, um, issue that I had. I took a huge return, um, that was large and so incredibly large, a huge energy return. Mm -hmm. And it, 
did something to my energetic, almost like I, uh, the timing of it maybe, or the direction of it or something happened. And I struggled there for a couple of years really hard because a massive, massive energy return came back. Um, so I think that it's so beneficial and it's so amazing, but, um, the balance of it, maintaining balance of it would be your most, your strongest position, you know, your power position would be maintain, like you said, that, that band of balance, no matter what comes, I'm in my, I'm in my balance state. Right? Yep. How do you come back to that? What, what do you, yes. How do you, yes. If you feel yourself leaving that balanced state, cause you figured out kind of what it is, how do you get back there? You know what I'm saying? To be able to stabilize. Mm-hmm. Right. So don't, no, you know, don't freak out on the, why did I just have this incredibly strong emotional ugh, and then yeah. don't allow yourself to freak out like something wrong with me am I doing right. something wrong just know there's huge things coming back and you're saying woo wee I felt that one all right wow I think I might sit down and cry for a minute or you know I might need to do something to express that energy I feel like I want to fight <laughs> maybe I should go for a run right exactly Exactly. Yeah. And because we think of tears often, but there could be the anger. I want to fight you mode, but there's got to be a way to bring yourself back into stabilization. Still express that same feeling, but in a uh, constructive way. That's right. And not, not really personalize it so much that you disempower yourself. Yes. You can feel it. I can feel like, an, oh, and I really felt that and I felt it. And I got it and I'm really feeling it, but I'm going to, exp- maybe I don't have to express it the same way. If it's homicidal rage, I don't really want to express homicidal rage, but I might go, I might go for a couple mile run and see if I can feel that feeling while I'm running. Right. Yes. yes. Um, and then have that be off now out of the, out of the way, because I held my, I can hold my um, stability and still feel that at the same time while helping support my body in any way that I can figure out how to do it. Yes. And to that point, you think about the going to run or, you know, hitting somebody or whatever. It's, it's one of the batting cages or hitting, you know, hitting some tennis balls or or something. Right. Exactly. Right. They're both ways. And the the point is, is it's expression of energy. Well, we have options of how we're going to do that. Right. Mm -hmm in an angry state, you go find a way to express the energy, but you don't do it in the way that humans. Right. Well, you think about it this way, when you're pissed off, yeah. even just, you know, from something that's happened here, one of the worst things that somebody else can say to you is calm down. Oh, right. right? <laughs> then you want to punch them. Right. So it's like one of those things, the same thing, treat that energy coming in the same way. I'm not going to ask you to calm down. I'm going to let you let it fly and I'm going to try to get it. I'm going to try to let you feel it. I'm going to validate it. And I'm going to recognize that that's the feeling of it. I'm not necessarily going to express it the way you might want to go rip someone's head off. I don't need to do that. Right. Right. Uh, But I I need to still feel it enough that it can dissipate. Yep. Right. Yep. Okay. I hope you enjoyed that video today and took even just a couple little nuggets away for yourself in your journey. We have our eclipse coming up on Saturday. I'm not sure when I'm going to get this out, but this is Thursday on the 12th presently. I'm hoping to have this out um, by the weekend. But anyway, I hope it's helpful in helping you navigate through these energies that we have in October coming in because they're here to powerfully assist us forward and continuing to allow us to integrate the energies integrate the soul fragments and continue to grow out our light body, continuing us through this ascension journey. So again, thank you so much for joining me and reach out as you wish, and I will see you in the next video.